Today on The Spot, we kick off September with a look at all the new releases coming to stores this week, as well as the new wares hitting the Wii Virtual Console. We'll go from cute and cuddly with a multiplayer preview of Kingdom Hearts 358 Days Over 2 on the DS, while the guys from Volition take us to the merciless terrain of Mars with a demo of Red Faction Guerrilla on the PC. All that and a chance to win random square swag. Today on The Spot. Hey everybody and welcome to the show. I'm your host Chris Waters, here with your regular dose of gaming coverage. We like to call it today on the spot. It's cool. Joining me once again is Lark Anderson. How's it going, Chris? It's going pretty well, man. Did you get a chance to hear what we're going to cover today? Oh yeah, yeah. Somebody uh, somebody told us to get your ass to Mars. So we're going to check out some uh, some Red Faction on the PC. All right, I like and, that game. And uh, and then there's also some Kingdom Hearts 358 Days Over 2. Yeah, it's it's a weird fraction, 358 over 2, but I guess you slide days in there. Yeah, yeah. Maybe then you don't have to simplify it. I, I don't I don't know. Normal rules of mathematics Al algebra, do not apply. Algebra or something. Yeah. We, we actually checked in with Square Enix for the official pronunciation on that one. And uh, now we're going to check in with Tor Thorson, because he's got today's headline. Hey everyone, it's your GameSpot News Update for Tuesday, September 1st. I'm Tor Thorson. There was a great disturbance in the Nerd Forest on Monday when the Walt Disney Company announced it was buying Marvel Entertainment for $4 billion in cash and stock. Wait, what? Marvel's loyal to Disney? Are you f***ing... Okay, Thorson, you can do this. <sighs> the deal, which has been approved by both companies' boards, will give Disney full rights to over 5,000 Marvel characters, including Spider-Man, the Uncanny X-Men, and the Fantastic Four. The buyout also won't immediately affect game publishers' deals with Marvel, which includes Activision's upcoming Marvel Ultimate Alliance 2 and Sega's deal to make games based on Thor, Captain America, The Incredible Hulk, and Iron Man. However, Disney CEO has implied that once those deals lapse, the company's own game division will take them over. <laughs> and some other quick news, Sony is re-releasing a high-definition compilation of God of War and God of War 2 this holiday season. The $40 God of War collection will feature both games in 720p HD video running at 60 frames a second, which is a nice lead-up to God of War 3's March launch. Well, that's it, your GameSpot news update for Tuesday, September 1st. For more headlines like these, head on to our news.gamespot.com. All right, let's jump right from headlines to your store shelves and check out what new games are coming out this week. New releases, activate. Subtlety wasn't exactly what Activision was going for when it announced earlier this year that Guitar Hero 5 would be available during the first week of September. After all, it's not like its arch rival is releasing a competing rhythm game based on arguably the greatest rock band of all times a week later or anything. Guitar Hero 5 expands Activision's franchise with 85 new songs, letting gamers jam out using a plastic guitar, bass, drum kit, or microphone. The latest installment also lifts the restriction on the one-instrument, one-player rules that have defined the series. Activision have also introduced forward compatibility to the series, which lets gamers play along to the tunes released in previous Guitar Hero games. On the massively multiplayer online role-playing game front, Atari and Cryptic Studios will be launching Champions Online for the PC this week. The superhero-themed game can trace its roots back to the now-canceled Marvel Universe Online. As with Cryptic City of Heroes, Champions Online offers a wealth of customization options as gamers do battle against a range of ne'er-do-wells. An Xbox 360 edition is expected later this year. Sci-fi gamers may also be interested in South Peak's Section 8, which will be available for the Xbox 360 and PC this week. With support for up to 32 players in its multiplayer mode, the game has been compared to Dynamics' seminal online shooter, Tribes. Xbox 360 shooter fans can also check out Gears of War 2 Game of the Year Edition, which includes 19 multiplayer maps, the Road to Ruin add-on, and achievements worth an additional 750 gamer score points. The PSP is where it's at for fighter fans this week, as both Namco Bandai and Capcom have brawlers on tap. From Namco Bandai comes Soul Calibur Broken Destiny, which features 20 playable characters, as well as a fighter creator and multiple gameplay modes. Capcom's Fate Unlimited Codes will be available only through the PSN, and features 17 fighters, cel-shaded visuals, and a reworked battle system over previous installments in the franchise. For further details on the week's games, visit GameSpot's new releases page. Release dates are based on retailer listings and are subject to change. Looks like we're starting to see some of the fall's really big titles hit store shelves. Soul Calibur on the PSP? 
Yeah, it features Kratos and Bill the Butcher from Gangs of New York. What? Bill the Bu How'd they get that Scorsese license? That Anyways, we're going to move on to what's new and available for download on the Wii. This week on Wii Shopping Channel, we take a look at all the new downloads on the Wii for the week of August 30th. On Virtual Console, the Sega Master System gets some love with the legendary Fantasy Star. When it was released back in 1987, Fantasy Star set the bar for all other RPGs to follow with immersive 3D environments and great storyline. Relive this classic and engage in dynamic turn-based combat as you guide Alice and her troops through the sprawling environments of the Agal Solar System in an attempt to defeat King Lassic and liberate the people of Agal. Fantasy Star is available now for 500 Wii points. New on WiiWare this week, it's 3 2, one Rattle Battle. Rattle your way through this party game full of exciting and intuitive minigames. Just grab the Wii Remote and shake your way into pure bliss. Or until your arms fall off. 3 2, one Rattle Battle is available now for 500 Wii points. Also new this week is The Tale of Monkey Island Chapter 2. Guybrush's high seas adventure continues as pox plague pirates lay siege to the innocent merpeople. Between defeating the merpeople and dodging the persistent pirate hunter hot on his trail, Guybrush manages to catch up with his beloved wife and despise arch nemesis. But the reunion is short-lived. Now Guybrush must focus on eradicating the pox of Lechuk before more harm can be done. And as the mighty pirate draws closer to a cure, the waters will only grow murkier in this thrilling chapter of the epic saga. Tales of Monkey Island Chapter 2 is available now for 1,000 Wii points. Well, that's it for this week on the Wii Shopping Channel. We'll see you next time. As you might imagine, one of our favorite things to do here at GameSpot is play games that aren't even out yet. A bunch of editors got together recently and did just that, and now let's check out some of their gut reactions to playing Kingdom Hearts 358 Days Over 2. Hey everyone, Sophia Tong here, and I'm joined by Lark Anderson and Kevin Van Ord, and we're here to check out Kingdom Hearts 358 Days Over 2 for the Nintendo DS. Now, I got a chance to preview the single player, but now, since we have extra carts, we're going to talk a little bit about the multiplayer mode. So you guys had a chance to play it. Yes, indeed. Well, yeah, what do you think? Uh, so far, so good, actually. Yeah. It's uh, co-op play. You all get together in the same... Uh, the, the, the missions are available in single player, but you can also uh, join up with other people and then uh, take on you know, all the Heartless and take on the boss um, together. All right, so how multiplayer works, like everyone needs their own DS and their own cartridge, of course, and it's up to four players. And what you do is just jump in, one person hosts, and depending on what kind of unity badges you've collected in the single player mode, you can play the missions in multiplayer. So it's really easy, just start a group, jump right in, and even if you play the missions by yourself, it's kind of exactly the same, except with other people, you either like fight the boss or like just uh, defeat all the Heartless. It's like one of, have you gone through some of the missions? Like yeah. the like, same obje objectives. They're really good for play on the go as well because yeah. they're they're pretty quick. Yeah. Um, and when you get people together, though, it's uh, you know it's a good way to pass a few minutes of time. Yeah. That's and it'd true. be great to take on the bosses with more than one person. Just yeah. To yeah. Make it a little bit easier because those are kind of big encounters. So it is. There is some competitive element into it because like not only are we fighting the bosses, we also have to collect those little silver like crystals. So the person who collects the most by the end actually gets crowned the winner. And I think you get more bonuses because of that. So there's a competitive side to it, and you can also toggle the different options and we can have friendly fire on. So that way it makes things a little more interesting if you want to do I could be a jerk. Way. Yes, you could be a jerk if you wanted to. It is actually awesome. impressive too the number of the number of options when you go in to set up your multiplayer match. There are a lot of different options in there in terms of how you want to set it up. So that's I, I thought that was actually pretty impressive considering, you know, you can go in and there, you know, there are literally, you know, dozens of different missions that you can go in and play this way. And that was our quick look at Kingdom Hearts 358 Days Over 2, and look for it on the Nintendo DS on September 29th. And be sure to check our site for more information. Well, Today on the Spot has featured all kinds of games for the Xbox 360, the PlayStation 3, and all those other video game consoles. Our coverage of the PC has been a little light. Well, that changes now. That's right. Late last week, we got a chance to check out Total Recall. <coughs> um, I mean, Red Faction Guerrilla for the PC. Yes, sir. So let's go check that out now. Grab your mouse, your sledgehammer, and your keyboard. It's time to free Mars. Hey, everyone. Brian Eckberg here. I'm joined by Sean Kennedy, associate producer on Red Faction Guerrilla. We're looking at the PC version of the game, which is due out in just a couple of weeks. Sean, first of all, someone who's never played Red Faction before, what is this game all about? Red Faction Guerrilla is actually the return of the Red Faction franchise. It came out eight years ago, mm -hmm. the first game. And with Red Faction Guerrilla, we're actually going back to that first one and it's pretty much the direct sequel to it. It's 50 years later, it's back on Mars, and we've taken destruction to a whole new level with the 
Geomod 2.0 engine, which allows you to destroy anything you see in the world. And the game came out two months ago for the Xbox 360 and PS3, and now we're getting ready to launch the PC version. Which is coming out in just a few weeks. There's a couple things you want to hit on. First of all, we should point out that this game looks amazing on the PC. Tell me about the graphics and all the work you did that way. When bringing it to the PC, we knew we wanted to give PC gamers you know, the best experience possible. Mm -hmm. And especially since Red Faction actually does have a fan base still on the PC from the very first game. So you know, we knew we wanted to take advantage of the best technology out there. So the game it fully supports DirectX 10. And if you have DirectX 10, you're going to get much better lighting, you're going to get better particle effects, better shadows, and all that mixed together with what's already in RFG just gives you a much more rewarding visual experience. Mm -hmm. so. Is there anything like w when you play the PC game, are you getting more out of that Geomod 2 engine, or is it pretty much the same thing we saw on the Xbox 360 and PS3? It just looks sharp. Yeah, I mean, it's pr pretty much the same thing. Mm -hmm. And you're going to, you're basically visually, you're going to be getting the same game that you have on the other two systems. But if you have DirectX 10, you're going to be taken to a whole other level. Because it's on PC, customization is, is an important thing. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the controls in the game. Okay. You know, again, bringing it to PC, we wanted to make sure that we're giving PC gamers the best game possible. I mean, so often you see console games that get brought over to the PC and it's just not the best effort. They just mm -hmm. shove it out there. So with the developer that we worked with on this, Reactor Zero, we worked with them for kind of almost about a year to make sure that this was brought over and the goal was to give PC gamers a game that felt like it was always on the PC, built from the ground up on the PC. Nice. So you have complete control over how you want the controls to be. You can use mouse and keyboard, you can assign them whatever way you want, you can adjust the sensitivity of the mouse, or if you want, you can actually plug in a 360 controller and have the same controls that you would have on the Xbox 360. Mm -hmm. Cool. So sometimes with console games come to PC, the HUD changes, the menus change. Is that is that the case with this game, or is it pretty similar to what we've seen? It's pretty similar. Everything's the same. I mean, when you're using mouse and keyboard, all the prompts automatically change to be you know whatever uh, key is assigned to whatever action you want to use. Sure. But when you plug in the Xbox 360 controller, it's it will look identical to 360. That's great news. Uh, of course, maybe the best news about this game is how much freaking content is here. You've got a ton of stuff in this game, mm -hmm. right? Tell me about that. So, you know, uh, earlier this month we released the first downloadable content pack for Xbox 360 and PS3, which was the prequel game, Demons of the Badlands. Mm -hmm. It's set three years before the game. It's about five more hours of content. But when that came out, all the PC gamers who've been waiting for this were wondering, are we going to get this? Right. And they are. You are getting the first downloadable content pack mm -hmm. in its entirety. Nice. In addition to that, you're getting two exclusive multiplayer maps. You're getting the six Wrecking Crew maps that were locked in the console versions, unless you had the pre-order codes. Mm -hmm. They're already in there, unlocked. You're getting six of the Wrecking Crew maps that are from the third DLC pack that doesn't even come out on consoles until October, so you're getting that early. Nice. You're getting the Bagman and Team Bagman multiplayer modes that are in the second DLC pack, which comes out around the same time as the PC version. Nice. So you're getting pretty much all the DLC, plus exclusive multiplayer maps. Yeah. All right, so final question, of course, is when is the PC version of Red Faction coming? So people can pick up the game on September 15th. There you go. Sean Kennedy, thank you for being here. If you want to learn more about Red Faction Guerrilla for PC, check out the game space on GameSpot. Lucky viewers who know a thing or two about Kingdom Hearts now have a chance to win all kinds of good stuff provided for us by the fine folks at Square Enix. One winner will receive this Jumbo Sora art piece displayed at San Diego Comic-Con, and another lucky winner will receive this Riku static art piece, also pretty good looking. And lastly, we've got an undisclosed number of Avatar mascot straps, so here we go. For the Sora art displayed at San Diego Comic-Con, Kyrie is one of the seven princesses in Kingdom Hearts 2. What realm is she a princess of? For the Riku static art, a Kingdom Hearts fan's name was included in the first Kingdom Hearts as one of the Heartless. What was his name, and where did he appear in the game? And lastly, for an undisclosed number of Kingdom Hearts avatar mascot straps. In Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories, Sora and Riku each mimic a pose when they level up. Which two characters' poses do they mimic? If you know the answer, submit your response using the green Submit Answer button. That button is here if you're watching in SD, and down here if you're watching in HD. You can also send us an email at onthespot at gamespot.com. Good luck. Well, that's about all the time we got for today, Tuesday, September 1st. 
Quick reminder that voting starts today for the all-time greatest game hero competition, so get to clicking. That's right, vote for Solid Snake. And join us on Thursday for a new episode where we'll be looking at Need for Speed Shift and more. If you have any questions, go ahead and send those to us at onthespot at gamespot.com. For the Today on the Spot crew and all GameSpot, have a great week, everybody. How's that yes, work? An Arnold Schwarzenegger joke without a play. Yeah. So what, are we seeing Total Recall the game? We're seeing Total Recall the movie. That's all we're going to do today. Have a great weekend, everyone. Or rest of the week, whatever. I was, you just <laughs> left me hanging there, too. Oh, oh you.